All right. Good morning, church. Okay. Um, I've got my notes just in case I, um, I go on cloud nine in my Bible. So um, I'm here to share a message for us. Um, I invite you guys to, to pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this week. We thank you that you have um, created this day from the beginning so we can come and rest in you, Lord. We come together and learn more about you. I pray that you'll be with everyone here today. And as, as I open your word, I pray that your words will be mine, Lord. And may you inspire me and to, to learn more as I share. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Genesis chapter 2. We can all turn to your Bibles. It's Genesis chapter 2. It is the first book in the Bible. And we're looking at verse 16 and 17. I'm going to be cautious with this, Bill. Try not to touch it much. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Our, our main title and topic for today is the power of appetite. The power of appetite. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, if we go back a bit to verse 9 of the same chapter, of chapter 2 in Genesis, the first part of verse 9, it reads, And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Who loves food? Yeah, I love food too. I love Who loves eating? Actually, silly question. We all love eating. It's a silly question. God made us to eat. God made us in such a way that eating is necessary. Because in verse 9 it says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So food should look good, right? And taste good. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but back down in, in Tokoroa, when we have church lunches, you can delete this part on YouTube, um, when we're having church lunches, we know who's made what. And we know what to eat. And if someone has made something and tried to replicate someone else's ingredients and everything, we know not to touch it because it's safe to trust in that person's um, cooking. So food should look good and taste good. If you serve something to me that is nutritious, but looks gooey and yuck and looks like mud and whatever, I will not eat it, even though it's nutritious, it's good for me. I will not touch it. But if you serve something to me that is in high fat, <laughs> high cholesterol, high sugar, but it smells good, and it looks good, I'll eat it. I will eat it. Food must look good and taste good. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is in verse 9 of chapter 2. God provided a source of food. It was his will that mankind would eat. But God placed a restriction for us. He showed us what to eat, and he showed us what not to eat. If we go back to verse 17 of chapter 2, in the same book, Genesis, it says, But of every tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. As you you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. There is something that we must not eat. 
even though there's nothing, there was nothing wrong with the tree of good and evil, but when God said, do not eat of it, it should be obeyed and avoided. Now, there are some foods that are restricted to us. Animals on land must have cloven hoof and chew the cud. Creatures in the sea must have scales and fins. I don't care how delicious pork may be cooked in, in, um, in, in curry and, and, and whatnot, but I will not eat it because God said do not eat. I don't care how delicious someone can cook a, a, um, a lobster, I would not eat it anymore. Sorry, I will not eat it at all. <laughs> because God said, do not eat. There are some things God said you may eat, and there are some things God said do not eat. And that's the obedience God wants from us. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The power of appetite. Now let's go to the chapter after chapter 2 of Genesis, verses chapter 3. And we're starting with verse 1. Um, Genesis chapter 3, and verse 1. Two, three. And it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruits of the trees of the garden, but of the, but of the tr fruits of the tree which is in the midst of of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, nor you shall touch, lest you die. The devil is trying to tempt Eve to eat what God said, do not eat. He is appealing to her appetite. One of the greatest crimes we can commit against God is to, is to take something that God has created for our good and, uses, and use it for his disgrace. One of the greatest crimes that we can do is take something that God has created and use it to disgrace him. God made mankind with an appetite, an appetite for food and an appetite for marriage, for physical relationship. But the devil uses something that God has created to tempt Eve to use that very thing to disgrace God. Now, in verse 6 of chapter 3, it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate of it. Was the tree of good and evil good for food? No. Awesome. No. No. It wasn't good for food. When we allow the devil into our lives, he will take whatever it may seem, or he will take whatever God has commanded not to do and make it appealing that it's good for us to take. Strategy came into the world because a man and a woman did not control appetite. The power of appetite. I heard a, a pastor said one time, conquering appetite makes it easier to conquer any other sin. Adam and Eve fell on appetite. The work of redemption, the denial of appetite was Christ's first work. The very same thing Adam and Eve fell, Jesus conquered it in the desert. It's the first thing Satan tempted Christ was on his appetite. Let's look at it from, from a spiritual aspect or from a spiritual side of it. You know, many of us, me, grow spiritually weak because of appetite. Many of us are spiritually sick, weak because of an appetite, of a lack of appetite in a spiritual way. 
the power of appetite. Now we're going to move to um, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Before I move on, I think I've said this before. If I make eye contact with you, just smile. Please, just smile just to keep me um, intact. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to read verse 1 to verse 6. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look at appetite from a spiritual side in a, in, in a spiritual way. Okay. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 6, it reads, And seeing the multitude, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught to them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, this is our main text for today. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let's take some words out and put another word in there. Blessed are they for an appetite for righteousness. Many of us are spiritually lost, weak, sick, because we don't hunger and thirst for righteousness. Without righteousness, no one can be saved. And if we do seek righteousness, what does the end of verse 6 say? We are filled. We shall be filled. People hunger and thirst for the things that are not of God. They have an appetite for the world, an appetite for money, for fame, for Facebook likes, for Instagram followers. They have an appetite to fill their something. Too much hunger for the world, you will lose your chance of being saved when Jesus comes. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with a career. But if we focus our lives on money and career or anything else, then we're missing what is right for us. Righteousness. Who is righteousness? Jesus. God. Jesus is the son of righteousness. Jesus said, I and my father are one. I and my father are one. So if, if God is righteousness, then Jesus must be righteousness. Righteousness is one of the chief attributes of God. Who is righteousness? Jesus. There's something I learned about righteousness this week. Um... You guys might have beat me to it, but I, um, I read the story about the woman that was accused and was about to be stoned. This is what I learned. It, it blew me away. I didn't realize this. You guys uh, are professors. You guys are way ahead of me, but this is what I learned. When they brought the woman to Jesus and said, this woman was caught in an act, we shall stone her. They were right. She should be stoned. Because it was the law to be stoned. But Christ did something that gave them a question mark in their head. He got down on, on, on his feet and started writing something in the dirt. And one by one, they all walked away. Now, Christ could have said, stone her. It is the law to stone. But Christ showed something. He showed a right, righteous act to say, if you're going to stone her, you cast a stone if you didn't have, or if you have never sinned. I understood that. If Jesus said stone her, that wasn't a righteous act. But God has to show something to these people that if you are not right within yourself, what makes you right to do that act? Now, and for someone to do that, to someone to have that um, attribute in their life, we must have someone in us. We must hunger and thirst for Christ in us because without him, we won't be able to do these kind of things. The question is, are you hunger and, th and thirsty for the word of God or do you have an appetite for Christ? There's a text in the Bible 
that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one else goes through the Father except through me. Now, Pathfinders and Adventures is, is one of the um, areas of our church that we have a entree, an, an entree for, to start their appetite for Christ. Adventures and Pathfinders is where we can start displaying Christ to them. So they can have a, um, uh, I don't want to lose my words now, so they can have a firm, steady foundation and knowledge of Christ. So when they grow older, their appetite for Christ will still continue on. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. If we hunger, Jesus is our bread. If we thirst, Jesus is our water. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. The power of appetite. There's a song that's been written. I'm not going to sing it. So I know you guys love my voice. It goes like this. as the I Am song. I think some of you have heard the song. But I just love it. It just explains so much about the person that we are here to worship the person that we are following because it says, I am. And it reads, I am the Lord, I am the almighty God. I am the one for whom nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am the righteous one and I am the lamb. I am the ram in the bush for Abraham. I am the ultimate sacrifice for sin. I am your Redeemer, the beginning and the end. I am Jehovah, and I am the King. I am Messiah, David's offspring. I am your High Priest, and I am the Christ. I am the Resurrection, and I am the Light. I am the Bread, and I am the Wine. I am your Future, so leave your past behind. I am the One in the midst of two or three. I am your Tabernacle. I am your Jubilee. I am hope, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest. I am your comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith. I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. Do we have a hunger for Christ? Do we thirst or have an appetite for Christ that we can teach our young adventurers or pathfinders or our kids. That's our message, message for today, guys. I pray that we have a, an appetite for Christ in our daily lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. You, con you conquered what Adam and Eve fell from. And Lord, and we're going through that right now. Appetite, if we can conquer it, we help that you will help us to conquer. Uh, we pray that you help us to conquer it, Lord, that we may get through it, that we may hunger and thirst for you, Lord, and that our children may see it and follow. As we dismiss from here, Lord, I pray that you will bless every one of us here today, strengthen us each day as we share your love and your message to others as we see. Please be with our adventures and pathfinders. May they grow to love you. And may, may they grow to serve you um, from now until you come, Lord. Bless us all as we dismiss from this place and cleanse us from our sins, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for your patience. I pray that you have an enjoyable day um, and enjoy the rain if it rains. If not, enjoy your food and God bless.